let's talk about Halloween Ends. Did you see it, Alan? I have not seen it. I've not. Why have you not seen it? A, uh, I'm not a big horror guy, and B, I've never seen any of the Halloween movies. All right, then. <laughs> All right. That's fine. It's fine. Well, but, fine, uh, Alan. But I will venture guess that Black Adam is better than Halloween Ends. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. Let's get into it. Um. I saw Halloween Ends, and I saw it on Peacock, where it is currently playing a Peacock subscription, four ninety nine. I basically saw the movie for four ninety nine. Now, I would have wished that to uh, that that I'd seen this in a movie theater. Unfortunately, I saw it on streaming, and I heard from very reliable sources, people that that I follow. Uh, my friend Eric Weber, shout out to him on uh, Midnight Movie Talk, his show. Uh, he really, really disliked Halloween ends. And so everything I heard about Halloween ends was incredibly negative. And here's what I'll say. It's not as bad as you've been hearing. It's also not that great either. Okay. But the fact that I saw it on streaming and I just saw it just, all right, sign up, boom, watch it on, on the TV. Uh, it was fine. I'll, I'll say this. Here are the, there, there are things that are good. There are things that are bad. Let me tell you what I really liked about it. It's it's the continuing saga of Laurie Strode. It's years after she's, you know, defeated Michael or, or thought that she's defeated Michael or he's gone. But what's interesting is that you see that the entire town, the entire city has been affected by this series of murders years later. It's affected people in terms of depression. People are paranoid in town that Michael is going to come back. Uh, so, uh, you know, there are a lot of, there are accidental deaths. There are suicides. The town is like going through a collective mental anguish because of the events that occurred in the original Halloween. And it, it opens on these parents that are going out to a last-minute Halloween party. They leave their young son with this kid named Corey, who's in his early 20s. He's the babysitter, kind of the friend of the family. He goes to babysit this kid, this young boy, who is incredibly annoying. Uh, one thing I like, there's a scene at the beginning. Uh, they're hanging out together, the babysitter, right? This guy, Corey, and um, uh, the, the little boy. And they're watching The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing, which I thought was great. It's a John Carpenter movie referenced in, a, you know, the franchise that started John Carpenter's career. That I thought was very entertaining. And he, he says, I don't think, I think this is not age appropriate. You shouldn't be watching this. And the movie is The Thing. I, 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 I like that. And then uh, there is a horrific death of this young boy. I mean, in a horribly horrific way. Is it realistic? No. Is it horrific? Yes. Okay. You can buy it or not. I, I, I don't know if it's entirely realistic, but it happened. And I thought, wow, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good opening. Then what the movie does is completely pivots so that the story is about this kid, Corey. He gets off. It's ruled an accidental death while he's taken off in handcuffs for the, the, the death of the kid. It comes out later that he got off, but he's, he is completely traumatized by this event, that he was involved in the accidental death of a young child uh, from a family that he knows. So then the story completely focuses on this kid, Corey. And it's it's uh, and this is where the movie kind of goes off the rails, where it's like, hey, well, what's happening with Laurie Strode right now? You know, what's happening with her granddaughter and her? You know, they're like they're kind of like roommates. Right. And and like, where are they at? Isn't the story about her? And, and it ends up pivoting to this kid, Corey, who is bullied by local townspeople that like gets driven into effectively becoming a monster. I thought that was a really interesting idea. And it would have been interesting to play it out over three movies had they planned out like a modern trilogy, right? Halloween, Halloween kills, Halloween ends. And they had taken this Corey character and kind of ran him through the three films, it would have been really interesting, but you can kind of see where it's going. Where what ends up happening is, is this, and I, I, I'm going to kind of stop with the spoilers after this, but uh, this kid, Corey, ends up meeting Michael in a sewer 
where Michael is just sort of hanging out with the mask on. He's like a, a vagrant. And uh, Michael doesn't kill him. And he asks him to teach him how to be a murderer. So it's this, basically the story ends up being about Corey and the making of a monster. It's not about Michael or, uh, you know, Lori, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis. So that's, I think, the problem that people have with it. And it's like, it's also 20 minutes too long. The movie's like an hour, 50 minutes. Doesn't need to be. If it was a tight 90 minutes, I think this would have been. But I will say this. The opening 10 minutes, awesome. Great kickoff. Shocking. The last 20 minutes, 30 minutes of the movie, great. Horrific. Great. It's this middle chunk that focuses on a character that we're not 100% invested in. I thought it was, but I will say this, I admire it that it went for the fences. It's like, okay, we're going to do a huge risk with this. The problem is, is I feel like this story should have played out over the three Halloween films It because it would have been a shock. It would have been a shock if there was a character that started out as good and went to become a homicidal maniac. And I will say this, some of the kills, horrific. I mean, there is some there is some gruesome imagery that that really I found disturbing. So, you know, where do I rank it? It's kind of in the middle. I would probably give the movie like a five or a six, but uh, I think a twenty minute shorter film that focused less on this on the Corey character uh, would have would have ranked much higher in my book. As it is, uh, you know, to me, this is the season. I love horror films around Halloween. So your mileage may vary. So it's a it's a mixed review from me, like I say, five or six, but uh but it's it's not completely, you know, dismissible. And if you've already got Peacock, throw it on. Throw it on for an evening, get a bucket of popcorn. There are good jumps and scares, and there are things that are incredibly horrific. Let's go to the chat here. So Terrifier 2 still stands at the top of the hill here. Terrifier 2 was way more gruesome than Halloween ends. Way more gruesome. 